I've got some more world edit magic for you. This is the world edit guide part three, where I show you easy ways to manipulate your Minecraft world to create amazing things in a fraction of the time. Last episode, I showed you how to be the boss of cutting, copying, pasting, moving and stacking. If you're not sure how to do those, go back and take a look at episode two again, and then come straight back here because we're gonna move on to some new stuff. And that new stuff is gonna be flipping, rotating, and deforming. So let's crack on with it. And in today's video, the weird shape we're gonna be using is this. Yeah, I know, don't judge me. And the first command that we're gonna do today is flip. So I've selected the area of my weird whatever that is, and I've left just a little bit of air around it, just for a little bit of breathing room. And I need to get it into my clipboard, so I'm gonna copy it, but it's really important where I copy it from. Because as always, copying copies it relative to your position. So let's just get right to the edge of the grid there, and I'm gonna do slash slash copy and then I'm gonna do slash slash flip. Now that's done absolutely nothing yet with what you can see, but it's done everything in the clipboard. The clipboard has now flipped it. If I then take slash slash paste and turn around, I will find an entirely flipped version of my thing, whatever that is, right behind me. Isn't that cool? It's exactly around the spot that I was sitting. And what's important to remember is that has been flipped relative to the position I was in. So if I move away just over here, say, and then do slash slash paste again, that has given me exactly the same as it was over there. However, what if I don't want to paste the air? I just want to paste the weird thing. Just like before, that is easy. If you remember this from the first episode, it's a legally protected rocky outcrop and that means I better not paste over it so I've got to be careful but I really want my floaty balloony shapey thing right there so I'm going to do slash slash paste and then minus a and there you go it's floated right in there and it hasn't taken away the legally protected rocky outcrop it didn't post the air it only posted in that building there building, shape, I don't know what it is. Maybe we need to do something else for the next bit. It's just too confusing. I'm not entirely sure this is any better, but whatever it is, it looks like there's only half of it there and it needs to be symmetrical. This is where flip really comes into its own. So I've selected the entirety of that shape. I've actually made it exactly around the shape. So no extra air at any edge. Although that doesn't matter because you've always got that minus A flag. And I want to flip it to make a mirror image of it. And I want to keep this bit there. So it doesn't matter where I stand, as long as I stay standing and don't move. If I go slash slash copy and then slash slash flip and then left because it is to my left and then slash slash paste that gives me an exact copy on the other side. Now let's say I wanted to copy it in a different direction. All I'm gonna do is stand on top of this glass block. This glass block is not inside the selection area. I'm gonna type slash slash copy to make sure that I've copied this all to my clipboard. And then gonna go slash slash flip and then I'm gonna put up, which is gonna flip it upwards. And then I'm gonna do slash slash paste and enter. And if I look up, I should see an exact copy of it upside down right by me so this is not the same although i did make it symmetrical oh no i didn't that's quite handy it's got white on the top and now it's got white on the bottom you can see that is a mirrored copy of that and what's also quite cool is you don't have to give it the direction in the instructions you can just look in that direction so again if i do slash slash copy and i look in the direction this way and i do slash slash flip and then slash slash paste that flips it and paste it in the direction that I was looking at. I suppose it looks a little bit like some kind of weird spaceship. So I've got this little segment of melon. Okay, it's not melon, it's terracotta and concrete, but go with it. But I'm really greedy and I want the whole lot. I'm just gonna remove this center block and I'm gonna stand in it and I'm gonna type slash slash pause one. That's gonna give position one right there. I'm then gonna go in a diagonal and make sure I've got the entirety of it selected. So I'm in direction of there, in direction of there. I'm gonna go slash slash pause two. That should have selected law. What a great shot, selected the entirety of it. I'm now gonna stand again in pause one right here, and I'm gonna copy this to my clipboard. So again, now it's in my clipboard, I can do a number of things to it, and one of those is to rotate it. So I've come into Quake Pro mode, so you can see most of this melon slice, I made it too big. I'm then gonna go slash slash rotate, and I'm gonna put in 90 because we always work in degrees when we're working with rotate and enter. If I then go slash slash paste, 
that is going to paste it there for me perfectly as a copy that is rotated 90 degrees. Now what's really important is this is now the clipboard. So if I then slash slash rotate another 90 degrees, that isn't going to have it in the same place of 90 degrees relative to my current selection. It's relative to the new position. So if I then go slash slash paste, that is going to paste it 90 degrees from where it was before. And again, if I then do slash slash rotate 90 degrees and then paste, that is going to paste the complete piece of melon for me. So all I need to do is just put that block back and I've got a complete section of melon there for me to eat. Now remember, when you copy something to your clipboard, you copy it relative to where you are. So if I do it somewhere random like here, slash slash copy, and then I slash slash rotate it, let's say 180 degrees, but then it's gonna paste relative to where I stand again. So if I stand, I know somewhere random like here perhaps, and I go slash slash paste, that is gonna paste it 180 degree rotation from the point at which I'm standing. You can see if I go straight up, that has gone 180 degrees around where I stood. And it's worth noting that you can rotate it any number of degrees you want, although things can get a little bit funky. I've copied the shape into my clipboard again, and this time I'm gonna slash slash rotate 150 degrees. So that's not quite a full turn, but more than a quarter turn, and enter. And they're gonna do slash slash paste, and it's gone all kinds of funky there, but can you see it's not a full turn. It's actually got some quite cool holes. I quite like the shape of that. This goes really badly if you do it with things like walls, but flat things, that might actually work, mightn't it? It's like half eaten or gone rotten. Minecraft's sometimes quite weird, isn't it? But rotate doesn't just go in one direction. You can actually rotate things across all three axes, X, Y, and Z. Yeah, I don't know what's going on with this big yellow and blue sea cucumber thing. It's just a mess in it, but let's just go with it. Now, I do have to say rotate is a little bit weird when it comes to X, Y, and Z. It doesn't do X, Y, and Z. It prefers to do it Y, X, and Z. I don't know where it went to school, but that's how you got to think about it. But you never have to be confused by this because if you press the F3 screen, you get this little cursor in the middle. It's red, blue, and green. The green is the Y axis. The red is the X axis, and the blue is the Z axis. So if I have the red axis pointing away from me, exactly like that, I know I am facing in exactly the easterly direction. That is positive X. If I turn around and have the blue bit facing straight in front of me like that, I'm always gonna be facing south. That is positive Z. And you can use this to visualize the way you're gonna rotate as well. Now, I made a copy of our selection directly stood underneath the middle of it, and I'm gonna stand right here, which means if I paste it, it will paste it directly above me. But I wanna rotate it first. If you rotate on the Y, it pyramids around that green Y axis, a little bit like a plane going into a flat spin. If you were to use the X value, it is gonna spin around the X axis, that red line. And if you use the Z value, it's gonna spin around the Z axis. And that makes sense when you think about it. The Y value is the first value. When we rotated that melon, it span around in a flat plane. So that is the Y value. We only put in one number. But if you wanna rotate it in the other planes, we need to use multiple numbers. So I'm gonna do slash slash rotate and I'm gonna put zero in the Y value. I don't want it to spin at all around in the Y plane like we did with the melon, but I do want to spin it around on the X value. I'm gonna spin it 90 degrees, so that is a full quarter turn. I'm not gonna do anything on the Z, so I don't have to put the number in. If I wanted to put a number in the Z, then maybe 90, that would then spin the Z as well. But because we're not doing anything with the Z, I can just leave it blank. I then press enter, and that is gonna do a rotation on that shape. I then do slash slash paste, like that and for whatever reason it has now crashed into the ground I actually wasn't expecting it to do that it's actually flipped around me at 90 degrees in the Y so I have recopied that area so I've got the original clipboard and we're gonna do it in multiple directions now so I'm gonna do slash slash rotate I'm gonna rotate it 45 degrees in the Y 45 degrees in the X and I'm gonna rotate it 45 degrees in the Z I'm gonna press enter and I'm gonna do slash slash paste. And what's it gonna do now? It's kind of sort of crashing into the ground, but not quite. What it's done is pasted all of those air blocks in as well to mess up all of the ground, but 
it's done a bit of a diagonal version of that original shape. You can see it's a little bit funky because it's not quite right, but it's got a hole inside it like the old one had. It's on a diagonal in all three areas. It's diagonally X, diagonally Y, and diagonally Z. So if you want to start building things on diagonals, maybe this is a way to start. And if you want to paste it in without all that funky air blockage, all you need to do is slash paste minus A, and it will paste it in without the air blocks that surround it. So it's still on that diagonal, you can see, but it's not messed up your ground. Blimey, I timed that exactly right. That was a complete fluke that's touching the ground there. Which brings us on to the really weird command, deform. If you want to do rotations, but you don't want to copy something to your clipboard, you just want to rotate it in situ exactly where it is, then deform is actually a good option. However, you are going to need a perfect cube around the center of your object for it to work properly. I've dug down to the center of my shape. This block is the very center. I'm going to left click to select pos one and right click to select pos two on the same block with my wand. And when I fix my shape, you can still see the center is selected. Now, as we mentioned in the previous episode, the best way to do this is to not use an expand command. We want to go out the same number in every direction. So your best command choice is the outset command. So let's go slash slash outset and let's say 22. That should get everything in there. That's perfect. I might actually want to outset that a little bit more. So slash slash outset, let's say another five blocks. That takes it right down to, I think, pretty much the ground very nearly and is the same distance all the way around. We've got loads of room because deform needs a bit of room. Because if you deform your shape and part of it goes outside of your selection, it just cuts it off. It forgets about it. It's not interested. And deform also has a little bit of a funky command. And that command is slash slash deform space rotate open brackets first coordinate comma second coordinate comma the number of degrees that you want to rotate it multiplied by PI divided by 180 close brackets. I know it's a mouthful. And those first two coordinates can be the X, the Y and the Z in any order. And depending on what order you put it depends on which direction you're going to be rotating it. So for example, if you had X and Y and then a number 45, that means that you're rotating it 45 degrees around the Z axis. Confused? Yeah, so was I when I first got my head around this. So let me show you. Now, because I don't need to copy this to a clipboard, I can be standing anywhere. It's not making this change relative to me, which is why deform is actually quite useful sometimes. So I've typed in here slash slash deform space rotate open brackets y comma z comma 45 pi divided by 180 close brackets. So I'm going to rotate around the x axis because y and z are there. So I'm rotating around the x axis and I'm going to rotate from the direction of the y axis towards the direction of the z. If I press enter, it does that. You'll notice it has also thought about rotating the outside of the blocks of the dirt as well because we're so close to the ground it's brought those blocks into that rotation as well it thinks about everything that would be in that rotation and sometimes if you just undo it it doesn't necessarily go back to exactly the same way it was before but because my shape's quite regular I've got away with it if you've got an irregular shape you might find that doesn't work so we're going to try that again and we're going to see whether or not it will go the other way so what I've done here is I've switched the z and the y coordinates so now it says z comma y instead of y comma z so that's going to go from the z axis towards the y axis if i then press enter on that you can see it moves in the direction i was expecting it to do so the organization of those two coordinates is really important to dictate what direction you're going in now this command is called deform so we can also deform the shape we can stretch it and we can squidge it and all we've got to do is repeat the same coordinate i've entered in the command slash slash deform space rotate open brackets y y so the same coordinate then comma 20 times pi slash 180 and that's going to mess about with my entire shape you can see there it's kind of squidged it outwards and downwards just a little bit so if i just undo that the bigger the number i use the more i'm going to get change so if i was to use 150 instead of 20 a much bigger number we should get a much bigger change Press enter, yeah, massive change there. You can, we've stretched that out along the Y axis loads. Deform can be quite fun to play around with, but do be careful because sometimes when you undo it, it doesn't go back to the way you want it very occasionally. So do be cautious. Episode four is all about shapes. So make sure you don't miss that one by hitting that subscribe button and the notifications bell. And while you're down there, if you've enjoyed it, remember to hit the like button as well. And I'll look forward to seeing you in another video. You take it easy now. Bye.